Hi everyone, welcome back and Happy New Year to you all. First video of 2020 and yes I've been out collecting all my solar PV data and uh, taking screenshots of my Eddy and Zappi and the Kona Electric so that I can present all the data. Uh, I, I do collect a lot of data and I do watch and monitor it and it's through watching that data that you actually get to learn about your system and how it really works in comparisons between days and weeks and months but also when things don't quite go right you're aware that they haven't gone right because you can see it in the data and there are a few anomalies to present today um, I want to cover two videos um, the first one this is going to be the December solar update so that will cover all my energy consumption and usage and solar generation on a monthly basis as per normal but also it's the end of the year and I'm only nine days away from the first anniversary of installing my first solar array. That was the 3.9 kilowatt system with the 3.6 kilowatt Solis inverter. So I'm basically a year in, so I should be able to do a separate video now to look at the cost justification, how that's really gone. So here we go, this is the first video, December's update and uh, the data for the month and then I'll go through with some observations after. Okay, here's the graph showing the combined total of generation from both of our solar arrays, and it's just over 200 kilowatt hours for the month, marginally less than November. And within the month, there was probably only about nine days where we generated more than 10 kilowatt hours, so enough to power the house and heat the hot water, but definitely not charge the car. Our 3.9 kilowatt array generated 125.9 kilowatt hours for the month. Well, sort of, it actually missed a couple of days. With our Wi Fi router off for a couple of days, um, the Solace system missed about 5 to 6 kilowatt hours of energy over two days. But with multiple data sources, I could fill in the gaps with data from the My Energy app. The best day for generation was the 2nd of December for me. It was 11.1 .1 kilowatt hours from our first array, but an additional 6.78 kilowatt hours from the second array. So a total of nearly 17 kilowatt hours, which was much, much more usable and really shows the benefit of having those extra panels. The worst day for generation, that was the 17th of December, and it was virtually zero, 0.1 kilowatt hours for the day. So that's 125.9 kilowatt hours plus the 5 or 6 that's missing and 74.87 kilowatt hours that's on the second array with a solar edge inverter. And out of interest for the whole year, showing on our meters, it's 4,237 kilowatt hours for our first array, the 3.9 kilowatt array. And on the second array that was installed in only September, so we missed most of the summer, 444 kilowatt hours, roughly. Okay, back to December's data. For the month of December, we consumed 249.2 kilowatt hours from the grid. Or did we? Our solar edge monitoring for the month shows that we used 255 kilowatt hours, and this monitoring has proved to be pretty accurate. The 249 kilowatt hour image was taken on New Year's Eve, several hours before midnight, so you'd expect it to be 250 at least. But in the morning, it showed us 243.4. Weird. So these dodgy looking numbers are from our British Gas Smart Meter display. What we can see here in this image is yesterday, so that was the 31st of December, 2.74 kilowatt hours is what it says we consumed from the grid. But I know it was more than that because we charged the car first thing in the morning a little bit and uh, the Solar Edge app is showing 7.32 kilowatt hours, which seems much more accurate. So I've actually been using that 7.32 in uh, my spreadsheets. I like to use this graph to give me an impression of how much energy I'm actually exporting to the grid, how much I'm wasting or how much I'm consuming. 185.7 kilowatt hours and 14.4 kilowatt hours exported. That's around 93% consumed of everything I'm generating. Pretty good, I think. And adding the 185 to the 14.4, you get pretty close to the 205 kilowatt hours that was generated for the month. So the consumed and the exported together, much closer to the actual amount generated. And as I mentioned last month, that does give me some concerns about how I'm going to utilize a storage battery when I actually acquire one. Uh, if I'm only going to export 14.4 kilowatt hours, that's not many going into the battery. Having all these different sources of data, 
is really helpful. But of course, there are times when it doesn't work. Uh, My Energy on their app, for example, they haven't really got historical data up to date and it hasn't been accurate since around August this year, which is pretty poor. Yesterday just wasn't available. Moving on to show the ways in which I consumed the electricity that we generated, 89 kilowatt hours went into the hot water via the My Energy Eddy device. Then on the Zappi, we put 45.89 kilowatt hours through solar into the Kona Electric as well. 14 kilowatt hours were exported, as we saw in a previous graph. 57 kilowatt hours, therefore, went to the house, giving a total of 205 kilowatt hours generated. That's how I think I consumed my electricity this month. Plugging those numbers into my main monitoring chart, the orange line is showing that uh, solar generation is down from November to December. The blue bar is showing the grid energy that I've used, and it's the highest in the year so far. So it'd be interesting to see if it drops down in January to the same as the January levels that I had last year. Bearing in mind that I installed solar on the 9th of January, so not a whole month there. The green and the red lines, that's hot water and electric car charging, they're both up. Hot water will be used more. Uh, It's December, it's Christmas, our daughter's on holidays uh, here, so using more hot water. But also the input temperature of the cold water is colder, so it's going to take more energy to heat up to the correct temperature. And looking at the cost of electric car charging, that's 137 kilowatt hours from the grid for my Kona Electric. Uh, that equates to 13.5 pence per kilowatt hour, or £18.51. I did charge on a Polar Rapid for 9 kilowatt hours at a cost of 281, and 4 kilowatt hours for free came from a Podpoint charger. 50 kilowatt hours came for free from a Tesla destination charger. That's a total of £21.32 or 2.3 pence per mile. Pretty good, but it did leave me with 40% more state of charge in the car at the end of the month than the start of the month. So there's some extra charging in there that I haven't actually used in miles. And doing the same for the year, because I've now got a full calendar year of charging on the Zappi with my Kona Electric. That's 394 kilowatt hours at 13.5 pence per kilowatt hour, a total of £53.19 for the year. Plus a few public charges, I think about £15 is what I've spent on public charging so far. Under £70 for the entire year. And keeping it totally accurate, I've uh, used 347 kilowatt hours from Podpoint for free and 55 kilowatt hours from Tesla destination charges. Okay, that's it for the data for the month. Uh, There were those anomalies, though, those odd things that I noticed that I'd like to share with you. So not really problems, just discussion points, really. And the first is this. This is the My Energy app. It's monitoring my solar generation, my car charging, my hot water heating via the eddy, my house consumption, and anything I'm exporting to the grid. And exporting to the grid is shown in red here. So because I'm generating 3.4 kilowatts, and the hot water heating element in the hot water tank can only use 3.1 kilowatts as a maximum, then the house isn't using very much, so I'm actually exporting some energy. So I'm wasting some electricity that I'm generating. And it'll keep exporting whatever excess energy that I'm generating until there's enough for the Zappi to fire in and start to charge the Kona Electric. Normally that would be about 1.4 kilowatts, but because I've got a uh, reduced mode set on the car, for me it's about 1 kilowatt, so I could be wasting a kilowatt going out to the grid. Instead, if I change the priority of the car charging to be equal to the priority for hot water charging, then I can share the amount of solar generated electricity amongst both the car charging and the hot water and not waste any, not export any. And when the hot water is complete, it's up to temperature, then all of the energy will go out to the car. Perhaps we need a new feature from My Energy to automate the process of changing priorities to start charging the car if it's available to do so, so that you don't waste any uh, exported energy. This next item had me confused to start with. I woke up in the morning, had a look at what uh, consumption we had overnight, and found that the car had actually been charging. I'd left it on Eco Leaf Leaf mode, so it should not have been charging. It was waiting for the sun, but something had overridden it. Something had started a charge that I didn't actually want, and uh, added 5 kilowatt hours of energy to the car. I've seen this a couple of times now and uh, raised a call with my energy to try and understand why the Zappi was charging my car when I didn't want it to charge. And it turns out it was the Fred trial. 
What's the Fred trial, I hear you say? Well, uh, I subscribed with my energy to take part in a trial to use the Zappy Smart Charger to allow an independent group to control my charging of my car to help balance the grid. The idea being, with central control over hundreds or thousands of different uh, cars charging, if there was a peak in energy and you needed a short reduction in energy, then you could tune down those chargers and charge less. Now, that wouldn't really affect any customers because you'd be having a negligible effect on how much you were adding to the car. And obviously, it would continue charging afterwards. What I didn't fully appreciate is that they're actually looking at initiating charges to anticipate your needs for charging and to charge your electric car when they know that the grid has a lot of clean energy available, which will also be cheaper energy. Cleverly, they had detected that I was charging in December using mostly grid energy, not solar energy, and therefore they'd added me to a group where they were initiating charges for me. What they're hoping is that energy companies can offer you products where you'll make savings on reduced, I don't know, uh, daily standing charges or the rates of electricity. And you gain through those reduced rates of electricity, but the grid and the energy provider gains by offering some flexible control, which is saving the grid money from having to invest in additional power plants. If we can reduce demand at peak times, we don't need to add additional power to the network. And how does all of that work? Well, the Zappi charger is connected to the internet via the hub. And that internet connection via the hub is obviously allowing a remote server to provide control commands through to the Zappi to charge my car. And on to the last observation. You know, I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video that uh, there was a couple of days where we had the Wi-Fi router off. So with the internet off, the Solus inverter, the Solar Edge inverter, and the MyEnergy app can't send data out to the servers, so I'm not going to see the data on an internet application, on a mobile phone application. But when I turn the internet back on again, if those devices have saved any data, then they can retransmit it. What I found interesting was how different they are. The Solar Edge inverter, when uh, it came back online, within a minute, two minutes, all of the data for the multiple days was up to date. So it looks like the Solar Edge inverter holds multiple days data. The Solus inverter, made by Jinlong, I think that's how you might pronounce it, uh, that uses a dongle underneath the inverter to transmit the data, but when the internet came back online, it only transmitted today's data. It didn't transmit any of the historical data. So it looks like the Solus inverter only contains one day of historical data, the current day. And that leaves the MyEnergy Eddy and Zappy devices. Now I know both of those devices contain seven days worth of data. So with the internet off, it should be able to retransmit those. But it took over a day. And I think I'm being kind there in saying a day. It was closer to two days to get the data up to date just for two days missing data, which sounds, well, astonishing to be honest. Maybe that's why historical data has been out of date for so long with my energy. Maybe it's such a time-consuming task for however they've designed it that it's really difficult to upload that data. Anyway, that's my observation. So there you go. Smart charging and grid balancing. Is that something you would do? Is that something you would sign up to with a smart charging tariff? If you gain from cheaper electricity and you let go of a little bit of control over charging your electric car to help balance the grid and help the environment. Is that something you'd do? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and sharing these videos. And uh, until the next time, see you again soon. Bye-bye.